All right, we're back with lesson number five, which is you can create your own motivation. When you're training for a triathlon, there are undoubtedly there's going to be times when you're unmotivated. And I'm a firm believer in listening to your body. And some of those times you're, you're not made of, motivated to go to that workout. And because of where your physical state is or your mental state, it's better to skip it. The, the thing you need to look at though is, is skipping that workout. Is that becoming the rule or is that the exception? If it's becoming more of the rule, then maybe we need to focus on your motivation. And there are so many ways to create motivation for yourself. Uh, one, of the, one of the most common practices is training groups or training partners. You know, if you, if you know your partner or your friend is waiting for you uh, to go on a run at 5 a.m. and you wake up at 4.30 and you really don't want to get out of bed, it's just that, you know, that fear of disappointing your, your friend and your training partner, knowing they're showing up and then you don't show up, right? So just having that sometimes is enough to get you to get your butt out of bed and, and meet that friend. A uh, training log is a fantastic way to create motivation because when you have a training log and you're, and you're writing down your stuff and then you look at, you get to the end of the week or the day and you look at it and there's, you know, you're supposed to be doing seven hours a week and you've done one hour a week. You just th think to yourself, man, what's going on? Maybe it's super stressful time, family, work, and that's okay. Again, it comes back to, is that the exception or is that the rule? Uh, but if, if you are, you're not getting your stuff in, you're looking at your training log, you can, you can commit to next week. You can say, okay, next week, I'm gonna make sure I hit at least four hours. And a lot of times just making that declaration, you know, declarations are a way of creating motivation. Whether you have um, an accountability partner or a, social media is a great thing. You can say, hey, you know, all my, all my followers and friends, next week I'm gonna exercise four hours. And then you can, if you want to up the ante, you can say, and if I don't do it, this is what I'm going to do. You know, you can pick somebody and say, I'm going to come over and I'm going to clean your house. Or I'm going to make a donation to this cause, right? So you get on the record and that can give you that, that motivation for whatever that you're seeking for. Uh, another great way that I like to use is asking open-ended questions. So say it's uh, I'm not too thrilled about going out for an early morning run tomorrow. I can say, what will it mean to my training if I do that workout? And just let my brain process that and it'll come up with all the answers of how beneficial that workout will be to my race. I can also ask myself, the negative of that is what will it mean if I skip that workout? This is definitely critical, um, especially of longer workouts, like big brick workouts before leading up to a triathlon. If I say, what's gonna happen if I don't do you know, this brick workout. Well, one thing that's going to happen is the next brick workout is going to be twice as hard and maybe I shouldn't even attempt it because I missed this one, which was a stepping stone to this, which was a stepping stone to the race. So if I miss that brick workout or long run, it means that the race is going to be much harder. Okay. So that's motivation for me to get that workout in this weekend so that the race isn't as hard. Okay. Um, races, speaking of races, races and training goals, I think are one of the best ways to create motivation. If you talk to other athletes, you'll find that this is true, that when people don't have a goal or a race on the horizon, their training just sort of falls off, most people. Um, but as soon as they put that race out there, especially if it's one that scares them enough, that's either long enough or they've committed to going faster, um, enough just sort of fear in their minds, like, man, I gotta get out and work out because that race is, it's looming out there, right? And so I'll often place, a half marathon for me is kind of the, the threshold of what I need to get force myself to train when I don't wanna train. Um, another technique that I like to use is before I go to bed, I have a journal and I write down what three things am I looking forward to tomorrow? So I've given myself before I go to sleep, three things in my day that I'm looking forward to tomorrow so that when I wake up, I remember those three things. You can also, also in the morning read those three things. Say, yeah, I was looking forward to this, this, and this. And now I'm more excited and more motivated to go about my day. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, both physical and mental things you can do. We know that listening to music is a way of motivating yourself. Um, breathing, thoughts, just changing what you're thinking can motivate yourself. If you're going to 
to do a, a hard workout or you're going to the pool and your self-talk is such that like, I don't want to go to the pool tonight. I, I, I'm going to smell like chlorine and I just want to go home and lay on the couch. I'm really not, I'm not that excited. It's going to be really hard to go to the pool. But if instead you're saying, okay, I'm not looking forward to this, but I know that when I'm done, I'm going to feel better. I know that if I go and I get to the pool, that I'm going to feel stronger about my race and that each time I go do a workout when I didn't want to do it, that's just, you know, that's another stepping stone for me. And that's another thing that I can feel confident about going into my race. Uh, visualizing is another way, right? So you can, you can visualize your race, visualize what it's like coming down that finish line. Just, just that thought when you're visualizing that, well, oftentimes it'll make your heart rate go up, right? That's a, a sign that, you know, your, your brain and your body, they're connected and they're getting excited and that's creating motivation. So if you're finding yourself low on motivation, maybe do some visualization about what you want to accomplish and then that'll help with your training. I'm sure there's probably, there's a lot. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of ways to create motivation. Um, and there's probably at least 10 other things that, that I'll think of as soon as I hit stop on this. Um, but the point of the lesson is that so often people think, oh, I'm just not motivated. And that's where they stop. Um, a lot of times, if you're not, if you don't have, if your motivation is here, take a look at your goals. Because if your goals are here, I guarantee you, if you raise your goals, you'll raise your motivation. So sometimes we just need a goal that's so audacious that, you know, it scares the hell out of us, but it also really fires us up. So maybe what you need to do is take your goal and increase it to something that scares you and then watch your motivation rise to meet it. Um, so those are some great ways to create motivation. Uh, have fun with it.